Now, I bet you didn't know this about me, but I'm a real advocate for the little guy. I can't stand these big companies that try and, try and cheat us consumers. Who am I on to now? The vinegar people. Don't freak out, they're not people made of vinegar. They're the people that make vinegar. You see, for years, I've been feeling like my vinegar isn't vinegary enough. I don't think, I don't think that labeling on the bottle is accurate. I think, I think they're, they're watering down the vinegar. I think they're, they're cheating us out of our vinegar taste. And, and I got a guy on the inside that's going to tell us that I'm right. Oh yeah, I mean, this came right from the top. We would constantly be watering down the vinegar. You know, a few pennies here, a few pennies there. Each, each batch would, would save us tens of dollars a week. This was known all the way to the top. Are you kidding me? If, if there was some way that, that you could analyze the, the concentration of the vinegar, I, I think you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how far, how far it went. You see, I knew it. I knew it. Self high five. Now, if there was only some way that I could test that vinegar for its concentration. Oh, I've always wanted to bust those vinegar people. <sighs> oh, so how would we do this? Well, there's a process in chemistry that we refer to as a titration. And what a titration allows us to do is to determine or confirm the concentration of an unknown solution. And we use a neutralization process to do this. So let's say our unknown is an acid like, oh, I don't know, acetic acid, the kind that's found in vinegar. We would neutralize it with a base and see how much base it took to neutralize the acid. And what that does, it allows us to use our friend stoichiometry in order to figure out the concentration of that unknown solution. If we can establish the number of moles of base that it took to neutralize that acid, we can work through what the concentration of that unknown is. And we titrate to something that we refer to as equivalence point. Remember, we talked about equivalence already in that it's the amount of acid or base that it takes to neutralize a base or an acid. And so what it does is it tells us when something is completely neutralized and the number of moles of acid and the number of moles of base have been the same. And so it gives us, again, that stoichiometric relationship that we can use. But how do we know when that's happened? Well, we have to use something that indicates when that reaction is complete. And of course, we refer to this as an indicator. And we have to take an indicator that's going to have an end point, that is when the indicator changes color, that matches up with this equivalence point. So oftentimes we try to choose an, an indicator that has an end point, that is a point where it changes color, that's at the same pH of the equivalence point of our titration. So really we're picking indicators that are going to change color when the acid and the base completely neutralize one another. So now going back to this titration, we need some specialized pieces of equipment in order to perform a titration. We call this specialized piece of equipment a burette. And if you're one of our American friends watching, you can probably drop the TE at the end. We, we like the French twist on things up here. And we call the clamp that holds it in place the burette clamp. And typically this is held by uh, a retort stand. You'll notice that a burette clamp can have two burettes simultaneously uh, clamped to it. It's pretty effective. And what we see is that in this burette we place something that we call the titrant. And that is the solution of known concentration. It's really important to know the concentration of your titrant or the titration really isn't going to work out for you. And then in a flask below, we place the analyte. That is the substance of unknown concentration that we are analyzing. Ultimately, what we're doing is we are performing the titration. That is, we are adding the titrant to the analyte until we hit the point where the acid and the base have completely neutralized. And again, it's this indicator that's going to tell us when that happens. And the most common indicator that you're probably going to use, at least when you're starting through this process of learning titrations, is phenolphthalein. And phenolphthalein is clear under acidic conditions and turns pink, a very characteristic sort of pinky purple kind of color, under basic conditions, or at least at pH is greater than 10. So, 
In a titration, what you're doing effectively is you are performing trials, that is, you're going to have to do the titration probably more than once, and probably more than twice, and probably at least three times in order to get appropriate data, and you're trying to establish how much of the titrant it takes to neutralize the analyte. And there's a couple of things that we can record here. We can effectively, even though we don't know the concentration of the analyte, we can control something. We can control the volume of the analyte that we have in there. So that becomes a known for us. We know, or at least can control, the volume of the analyte, the unknown, that we have in our Erlenmeyer flask that we're testing. We can also know, and should also know, the concentration of the titrant. And if we can evaluate the volume of the titrant, and that's why we typically perform two or three trials, because we're going to average the volume of titrant that we add. If we know the volume of titrant that we add, we know a few pieces of information. We know the volume of the titrant, we know the concentration of the titrant, and we know the volume of the analyte. So, we can refer back to stoichiometry, of course, to help us out. So in the quantitative analysis of titrations, it's based on stoichiometric relationships between the acid and the base. So if we have our titrant and we have our analyte, since we know the volume of titrant that we added over the course of those trials, and we know the concentration of the titrant, remember that's the really important part of the titrant, that you do know its concentration, we can figure out the number of moles that we had to add to our analyte or our unknown. If we can establish the relationship, and typically in our first studies of chemistry we'll be given the equation that we're dealing with, so we'll know that it's acetic acid, we just won't know its concentration. We can then establish the molar relationship and the mole ratio between the titrant and the analyte. We can figure out the number of moles there must have been in the analyte, and since we controlled the volume in that Erlenmeyer flask of our analyte, we can now figure out our concentration. So this is really just a straightforward stoichiometric calculation. You don't have to worry about limiting reagents or anything like that, it's just volume using concentration to get the number of moles, use our mole ratio again, the volume to figure out the concentration of our unknown. Now, before I leave you so that you can go off and practice these calculations for titrations, let's take a look at how we would approach an example. And typically in an example, you'll be given the concentration of the titrant, you'll be given the volume of the unknown that you have, and then you'll be given a set of data in regards to the trials that were performed. And what you need to understand is that a burette is set up a little differently. You see, a burette, its graduations are read top to bottom. So in a graduated cylinder, we would read it bottom to top because we typically fill the liquid there. In a burette, it's gravity that's emptying the liquid from the top to the bottom. So we actually read it going down. Zero is at the top, and in a lot of cases the burette is 50 milliliters, so 50 is at the bottom. So what you'll notice in these trials a lot of times is that the initial volume starts at say zero or 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 and then empties down. And so what we have to do is remember that it does empty down, that it starts at zero, goes down to 50, or whatever it is for the volume of that burette, and we have to record the initial and final volumes and calculate the difference between each one of those things. So you can see for each one of these trials, we have volumes that are initially there, finally there, and we're calculating the difference between those two so that we can establish what the average volume is transferred for each titration or for this titration. So hopefully after watching this video, you have a better idea of how we could evaluate an unknown solution so that we could establish its concentration and how you, if you really wanted to, could bust those vinegar people. And, and no offense to the, the vinegar people, I'm sure you're all very nice and, and trustworthy. I, I just, I, I did this for the purpose of my video. Thanks for watching.